first family time out here. The first family time actually at uh. That's the runs the else. Come on in, come on in. This is like our family time has sure grown a lot since our first time at uh, Omar and Rebecca's house. Do you guys remember? Yep. And, uh, say again. And his lights this time. And we got lights. We got lights. Thank you. But uh, guys, here's what we're gonna do. I wanna have a little activity. Uh, we're gonna do the trust fall, so we're gonna start with Vanessa. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I got you, I got you. 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 Let's do this. I got a few scriptures tonight. It's really just a hang time, guys. Hope you enjoyed the sweets, enjoyed the desserts, enjoyed the fellowship. Uh, but let's start with uh, um, two questions. Number one, what are you most grateful for that God has done in your life this year? Oh. And what are you most grateful for from now till December that God will do that you can make by faith? So, let's start. If anyone is ready, that's a big question. What are you most grateful for so far this year? And what are you most grateful for that you believe God is going to do? Yep. Um, for me, I would say something I'm most grateful for this year is uh, just being able to get a permanent job. Mm, uh, so I don't have to, and I didn't have to interview or anything like that. It was just happy to so wow, pretty um, And I think something that I'm grateful to be looking for that I'm hoping God will give to me is one of my family members getting baptized this year. Amen. Come on. Uh, Come on, Seth. Uh, All right. Bro, you want to? Yeah. I'll say one thing I'm, I'm grateful for this year is I'll say for our health, for our family. Um, I can take that for granted. I don't know. <laughs> But especially because I feel like it's been crazy with our family with just chow and stuff like that, but their health. And um, I'll say one thing I'm looking forward to this year for myself is just uh, just being close to God. Just mm -hmm. being close to God and just walking just close to God. Come on. Awesome. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, well, guys, we got Dominic, Miranda, and the Bible talk here. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, bro, you want to thank that chair? Is that a free chair? Yeah, I thought, I thought Bro, it's all you if you like. Oh, no, I, was, I, I don't know, because there was a left. Amen. Well, guys, uh, welcome Dominic to the uh, LOL ministry here. Yes. Woo! Come on! Um, bro, you want to go next? Oh, sure. You ready? All right. <laughs> um, I think one thing that I'm, I'm grateful for like, I me this year is a, a new job. I'm actually like a uh, step up from where I was before. So like uh, I'm, I'm actually getting to work with children this time around. Wow. So which is really great. Oh, it's really fun. No, and, uh, and, and I think what I'm looking forward to this year, but what I'm kind of aiming for is for my mom to be baptized. Wow. Oh, my mom's got that. Come on. Got that. Mm. All right. Yeah. Arthur. Pretty much. Um, awesome. Very I would say the, the one of the things that I'm grateful for that he's done I'm sorry, no, that he's done this year so far is I would say the move because when I when I think about it, it it's like he's bringing me back to him mm. because I have to rely more on him. It's just like I don't have anything. Like I'm giving up everything all over again. Come so on. I think it's it's awesome. And then I'm looking forward to being challenged. Come on. For whatever he has in store for me. Well, there'll be a few. Oh, I know. Guys, it's great to have Arthur as well. This Come on. family time with us. Amen. Oh, all right. Bro, super grateful to have you. Yeah. I'm more. Okay. Nina, you ready for us to pick it back up with you? Yeah. Mm. That's good. And, uh, what was I saying? What, what I'm grateful for? To be. Repentance. I'm yeah. grateful for repentance. Yeah. And I'm 
looking forward to my niece getting baptized. She's studying the Bible right now. Wow. Awesome. That's cool. Come on. That's, That's cool. awesome. Um, I'm grateful that God allowed me to get married. Hey. Hey. Something that I look forward to actually is my dad getting out of the hospital without a trick and getting Come on. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's okay, Arthur Went. Vince, you ready? Something you've been grateful for? You're grateful for that God's done this year and something that you believe God will do by the end of the year. I'm grateful for uh, we studied the Bible with Common, got yeah. baptized. That's good. Come and on. Something for the rest of the year, grateful I mean, to, uh, to go through more challenges. Wow, that's a good heart right there. Come on, <laughs> come on, come on. Amen. 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 I'm grateful. Uh, it's going to kind of sound weird, but I had two jobs at the beginning of the year. Uh, and then uh, one job actually just uh, fell away because... Um, it wasn't supposed to be God. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, for sure. And uh, I believe that God was showing me to, like, have a little more time for Him. So I'm grateful for that. I have more time for Him now than I used to. And um, uh, something that I look forward to, um, I'm trying to get uh, uh, Jared to come and uh, study some, uh, get some studies going with us. And hopefully uh, he could get baptized before the end of the year. Come on, come on. Who's Jared? Jared is the guy that I share my faith with, with uh, Jesse, the visitor that came in. Three visitors. Uh, Jeez. On, uh, wow. uh, yeah, on Brett. Great work, bro. So thanks for sharing. Yeah. All right, my brother. Yeah, um, one thing I'm grateful for that God has done is um, kept me sober. And, mm. um, also, uh, that's awesome. Like, thank you. Also, when I quit my last job, uh, <coughs> I found a, a better job and it was more stable. So I'm mm. thankful for that. Come on. That's awesome, bro. Thanks Come on. Sure. More fresh. Um, yeah. Fresh, fresh. I would also say, <laughs> careful God allowed me to get married. Awesome. Amen. That's Amen. What's a blessing? And, um, I would say uh, something I'm looking forward to is just continuing to stay close to God. Oh, yeah. Come on. Thanks for sharing, bro. Come on, bro. All right. You have not gone yet. Come on, Calvin. Uh, something I'm grateful God for is doing the Bible studies with Mo, uh, Johnny, Jesse, Vincent, Parker, and Omar. Wow. And getting baptized and look forward for this year, I guess, um, with searching with a different job and growing in my faith. Come, Come on. on. Come on. Hey. I'm grateful for my cousin, Jim, in New Jersey, who's been studying since July. Oh. She's a psychiatrist, so she's really cool. wrestling. Um, and um, grateful that that somehow she saw something in me, she said, that inspired her to really want to know about the Bible. We grew up mm. Catholic all our lives. Wow. wow. And, um, Life and I'm hoping and looking forward to her getting back. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, maybe. What's happening? Oh, um, easy, I like that. Uh, one thing I'm grateful. <laughs> There's a lot of pressure there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that fan's I can feel it. <laughs> um, no, so I'm grateful, honestly, uh, for my wife and us for still being faithful this year. Uh, a lot of challenges have happened. Uh, so I'm grateful for just allowing us to stay close to God uh, and just fighting. really think about it and just stay faithful as you know break or whatever. But I'm looking forward to yes just keep crushing and keep praying uh is hopefully you know in the future that we can have kids. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Little back up. Keep 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 praying for the twins twins putting out there. Uh, the little Elmizis. The Elmizis. Does sound like him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, oh, man. Um, I am, I think, what I've been grateful for this year, I think, is um, my husband. I mm. think there's been a lot of challenges in my life, and I, I think it's, I'm grateful that I've had a, really a, a man of God that's been able to help me and lead me. Um, Maya. When I, Maya. What I want, would like to see this year is, yes, 
us to eventually um, uh, have the child, but um, it takes time. So I'm not know about this yet. But I think oh, <laughs> I say that because that is definitely something that um, I'm going. Um, I've had to health challenges, so trying to go after health challenges. So hoping that to get better in my health, so that. that Come on, him, man. Let's go. Um, I'm grateful that this year God blew us to the OC. Oh, you know, come on. I feel like I would have really gotten to know this group right here. And I, I, love, I love this region, so I'm grateful for that. Um, and then what I want to see this year is I just want to personally grow. Like, mm. I want to grow as a wife, as a mom, and as a woman. Come on. Come on. Awesome. Sis, welcome. What are you most grateful for that God has done in your life this year? And uh, what are you grateful for that God's going to do for the rest of this year by faith? Well, uh, this year it was very difficult for me. And I'm grateful that I was able to be with my grandma. Because she's not a, she, okay. she wasn't in a, in a good health. And I'm hoping this year she's perfect. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing. Come on, Amen. Well, um, I'm grateful for a lot. I think we're grateful the, the Spirit brought us to Orange County. Uh, I'm honestly super grateful for this ministry. Uh, we've been so busy with just overseeing work for so many years. It's been many years since I've led a, a Mingles Bible discussion. And this group, you got, I got to be honest, I brag about this group. I love this group. I think this is one of the most transformed groups through all of Orange County. Orange County changed a lot. Come on. But this is hands down a group now and other groups are struggling. I say, let's bring disciples in this group so they can see what God's doing. I mean, we got Arthur all the way from the West. You know what I'm saying there, guys? Uh, just <laughs> pick on Arthur. But uh, this group has really become something special. And uh, I'm just excited. And I think what uh, what I'm excited about is seeing this group multiply. Mm -hmm. I think seeing uh, seeing Marie, seeing Arthur, seeing Omar, seeing all these guys take a Bible talk yeah. and see this group multiply and split in multiple ways. And I just know God's going to do incredible things. Amen? So that's what I'm excited for. Come on, Mom. Um, good to see you. What are you grateful for that God's done so far this year? And what are you grateful for by faith that he's going to do till the end of the year? Keep me alive. Hey. Say again? Keep me alive. Keep me alive. Come on, sis. Thanks for sharing. Amen. Amen. What are you grateful for from now till the end of the year? Same. Same. Amen. Give it up for Talisha, guys. Yeah. Come on, Talisha. All right. Well, look over in First Thessalonians. I want to look at these scriptures with you guys. Uh oh. Welcome to our little family time. Are you guys fired up? Yeah. yeah. Fired up. Come on, bro. All right, that was the most anticlimactic. I, I know. I know. Come on. Come on. All right. Let's do this better. But if you're struggling, just submit it. Are we? Oh, are we struggling? Oh, oh, okay. I don't know. I guys, are we? Are we fired up? Yeah. Whoa. Struggling every day. Yeah. 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 I want to share a passage with you tonight. Come on. I've shared this in most of my deep times this week, and I was wondering <laughs> what we should look at for family time. And honestly, this is a, a few concepts that's deeply in my heart right now that I believe is God's message for this ministry, for OC, and for his people as a whole. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, we pick it up in verse 4. Is everyone there? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Verse 4. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. yeah. God loves you and God has chosen you. Do you know that? Do you believe that? Yeah. 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 That you're not just part of like a cool little Bible discussion and you're part of the City of Angels Church. No, 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 no. no. Forget all that. That, 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 that's cool. <clears throat> but even cooler is God has chosen you. Yeah. The creator of the universe mm. has chosen you. He loves you. And he's chosen you. Wow. Let's continue. Because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. Mm -hmm. Come on. So what three things? How did the how did the gospel come? How did the message come to those in Thessalonica? What three things? Number one? Power. power. Okay. Number who can get two? Holy Spirit. Who can get number three? Deep conviction. Deep conviction. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. What does it mean to have deep conviction? Come on. Stand firm. Yeah. Firm? Way 
Yeah. Equal, unshakable. Unshakable? Equally persuaded. Absolutely. Mm. Here's the reality, guys. Here's the reality. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, be prepared for when the day of evil comes. Not if the day of evil is going to come. Yeah. When the day of evil is going to come. It's an absolute fact. I love the story that Jason Dimitri tells when uh, when he went through a hard time in his life. And uh, ultimately, around the time when the ICOC crashed, and he shared how he went through most of his life riding <coughs> off the faith and convictions of other people. You know, there's a lot of things you can borrow in this world, but something you can't borrow is convictions. And yeah. something you can't wait till it's too late to get is conviction. Because right. if you wait till it's too late, here's what's going to happen to you. He had the convictions of all the other disciples. And he enjoyed the faith, and he enjoyed the zeal, and he enjoyed the Bible talks, and he enjoyed the Sunday services. Yeah. And in his mind, he carried around a bag of convictions, not realizing it was borrowed conviction. Mm. And then finally, the day of evil came, the ICOC crashed, and he said, oh, I have conviction. Let me reach in my bag of conviction. And he reached in. Nothing there. And he pulled out nothing. Wow. And here's what's on my heart. I'm not a doomsday guy, but I'm a doomsday guy. Why? Because Ephesians 6 says, when the day of evil comes. Okay, one of the brothers, oh, there you go, sis. You got a seat right there for you. Here, sis. There you go. You got a, you got a better seat. Give it up for those brothers, guys. <laughs> here's the reality, though, guys. The day of evil is going to come. And my question for you, when the day of evil comes, what are you going to do? Mm. For me, my father in the faith is a fall away and a false teacher. The guy who baptized me is one of the greatest persecutors against our movement. Yeah. Oh. I've seen a lot of crazy things happen in my discipleship, but I'm still here. Why? Because I always strive to develop deeper and deeper and deeper conviction. On, mm. As a young Christian, or actually before as a young Christian, rather, in my counting the cost study, the brother looked at me, and ironically, he's a false teacher now. The brother looked at me and said, Jason, if everyone in the movement fell away, if the movement crashed, if everyone died, if it crashed just like the ICOC, next week, what would you do? He said, would you pick up the Great Commission and keep going, or would you fold like everyone else? And I said, my brother, I'm going to carry on the Great Commission till the day I die. Wow. And my question for this group is, are you radicalized at that point yet? Or do you need to spend this week radicalizing? Because who knows when the day of evil is going to come? I don't know. You don't know. But if we crash like the ICOC, would you stick together in this Bible talk and say, we don't care about the rest of the world. We are going to stay faithful and LOL. And we are going to evangelize on, the world yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. I, I, I built churches for many years now, for over eight years. How I've do I know? That. Uh, I, I, I got my tooth pulled eight years ago and I'm finally getting it worked on eight years later. Okay, <laughs> my first year of church Ow. leadership. I was in the oh. dentist office all day. So if you hear me slurring a little bit, it's because I had a shots on my mouth all day. Okay, oh. but uh, oh. I led churches for years. And here's how I've always led churches. I need to build it with a mindset to get every Christian to believe. If the whole movement fell away, we alone would get the job done. That's the yeah. only way we can actually be radical and evangelize. Yeah. You want to see fruit? We got to build as if this is the last group left on earth. This is the apocalypse. World War Z is taking place out yeah. there. We are it, and it's up to us to get the job done. Do you believe it? Come on. Come on. If not, that's okay. If you're like riding off of my faith and my conviction right now, that's okay. But get it down this week, for yeah. we do not know when the day of evil will come. I want to call us very quickly to have deep conviction in a few areas. Number one, in your walk with God. Look at Mark 1. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. We'll go through these quickly because I would like to get a few thoughts, but if I sound intense tonight, it's because I am intense. I'm always intense. I don't know not to be intense. Because this is an intense thing. This is the salvation. I'm fighting to build this group and to build the L my section of the LA church so my son has a church to go to when he's a teenager. Come on. Come on. I'm fighting against the warmness, against, uh, 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 against spiritual laziness, against false doctrine, against keeping people focused on the scriptures. Why? Because I want to hope for the next generation. Yeah, me too. But I want to train every disciple around me to pick up their swords and not just be a part of a group, but to be warriors together, yeah. fighting for truth, yeah. fighting for God, yeah. and fighting in the spirit. Number one, we need to fight with deep conviction and for your walk with God. Yeah. And Mark 1, who can read this one for me? Verse 35. 
Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Isn't that amazing? Yes. What did Jesus do in the morning? Pray. 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 He got up. How early? Early. early. Four. Three. Now, what did he do the night before? Some of you say that was Jesus. He was full time ministry. He had plenty of time. What did he do the night before? He was up the entire night. The, the Bible says, the Bible says, verse 29 to uh, 34, how the whole town gathered at his door. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So, uh, how do you know when someone values something, they get up early and they prioritize? Yeah, that's true. Jesus, his walk with God was not a checklist. His walk with God was on a checklist. It was his greatest joy. Mm. Yeah. You know, there's a lot I like about Christianity. I like saving souls. Love my marriage. God gave me a son. Love the church. Love my relationships. Love discipling. You know what I love most about being a disciple of Jesus? Mm. Every day. My personal time with God every day. Mm. <clears throat> it refreshes me. It, it recharges me. You know, I don't know if you guys uh, plug your phones in at night. <laughs> don't you hate that feeling when you plug in your phone, but it doesn't really charge? Oh. Yeah. And then you look and it's the same percentage, or it's dead in the morning. <laughs> oh. It's the worst. That's the way some of us can be spiritually if we don't really love our time with God. Wow. And we look like we're plugged into God. We look like we're charging. We look the part. We sound the part. We're acting the part. But that's the point you're acting. Because you're not really getting charged up no matter how much you plug in every single day. You're not really charging. So my challenge for you, it's time to actually get plugged into God. How do you know if your quiet times are, are working? You're feeling refreshed. How do you know if your quiet times are working? You feel recharged. Guys, I'm busier than I've ever been in all my walk with God, but I'm not more burned out. I'm less burned out. Why? Because as my responsibility increases, as I'm getting less sleep and I'm waking up earlier and staying up later and discipling more people than ever before, my quiet times are getting better. Come on, Come on Jason. Almost 14 years as a Christian, and I need my quiet times more than ever before. How about you? Do you believe that? Yeah. Do you believe that you need your quiet time to survive? <clears throat> and are you living like that? I want to challenge us to have deep conviction. There she is. To cling to God like never before. And watch what God does in your life. The second conviction I want you to have is to have a personal conviction. To have deep conviction for personal righteousness. Look over in Psalm 32. Mm -hmm. Psalm 32. Psalm 32. Now, we're still a little awkward, guys. Don't be afraid to, like, like we're like the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ is traditional and quiet. Don't be afraid to, like, do, do some grunts. You know, go. I'm with you. Like, let's try to make it not feel so awkward, guys. Come on. Like, we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it feel awkward and talk about the awkwardness until you come back. So, like, like, let's increase the spirit. Let's like, go. I don't want to lead an awkward. I know I'm an awkward guy, but help me out here. It's because it's, it's we're selfish. Yeah. So, like, stop thinking about yourself. Come on, Jason. Like, get your head out of your face. Oh, and okay. and let's like <laughs> let's get focused on other people and get so excited for the lesson that we're hearing Come on. Yeah. that we're like actually or I'm preaching to a dead group. Yeah. And that's really hard. Oh, um, yeah. So let's actually get excited right now. Amen, yeah. guys? Yeah. Okay, so secondly, ready? Deep conviction and personal righteousness. Oh, yes, yeah. See how much better that feels? Yeah. Yeah. It's really not about me. It helps the whole group feel better when you're giving. Okay. And then everyone feels more encouraged, and we create an experience and memory that sticks in everyone's mind that's deeper. True. Amen? True. Psalm 32, verse 1. Who can read this one? Verse 1 through uh, 5. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, this please, yeah. I don't know. 1 through 5. So Psalm 32. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose yeah. sins are covered. Mm. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and whose spirit is no deceit. When I sit silent, my bones broken away, through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. What do you guys see quickly about this passage? Give me a few things. Mm. Yep, Arthur. Just confess and get open. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Repentance? Yeah. Being blessed, yeah. Repentance? Repentance. What did David feel like when he wasn't open? 
Heavy. Guilty. 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 What, yeah. What's he say? Wait, wait, how? Mm. Wow, my strength was sapped like in the heat of the summer. Have you guys ever felt that before? Yeah. Yeah. Here's the reality. We're all going to sin. Even Arthur has like one or two sins. Even Amanda sinned once in her life. So. You know what I mean? Like, we all, I know this is really hard to believe, guys. Even Talisha sinned once before. I know. I know. I know. Forgive me. Um, we're all going to sin. The Bible says in 1 John, if we claim we have not sinned, we make God a liar. We make God out to be a liar. Yes. You want to make God out to be a liar? No. No. We're all sinners. We're all going to fall short. And for many of us, it's time to embrace it because we want to feel like we're perfect and we have this perfectionist mentality and want other people to have this persona and this image of us. We're not real with who we are. And here's reality. I'm jacked up. You're jacked up. We're all jacked up. Yeah, okay. Let's be jacked up together. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and stop trying to act like you're not jacked up. Because here's the reality. Oh. When you act like you're... Wait, what she said? We're the jacked up Bible talk. Yeah. <laughs> jacked up Bible talk. <laughs> and the brother's got to hit the gym, too. we got to be jacked up. Yeah. Uh, here's the reality. Like, we know we're jacked up. So when you act like you're not jacked up, you make us feel weird. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and you, you create like it's just like how are you good how are you fine how are you right. like, <laughs> how are you somebody uh, Arthur how's your day it's like not good I'm, my face was drilled the other day with uh, the dentist office like, amen. amen not every day is gonna be chippy oh bro it was it was just it was good it was fine right. I actually wasn't fine I really actually kind of had a tough day it's okay to be real yeah. Yeah. real it's okay to be honest yeah. it's okay to say what you're feeling yeah. Straight up. Now, I'm not saying emotionally vomit every time you come in the fellowship. Some yeah. of you are opposite. Yeah. Some of you are not over at all. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you are the moment you're in the fellowship. It's like, it's like the exorcist. Oh, you're just going for it. That's how you say it. Okay. Okay. So we got to learn. We got to learn control. You're open, but appropriately open. And here's the reality. The Bible says in First John, if you're not open, you separate yourself from God, yeah. and you people. separate yourself from one another. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not confessing your sin daily and walking in the light, and you live like that, you are not a Christian. Yeah. Oh, wow. You guys realize that? Yeah. Oh, wow. You're not a Christian. Yeah. That's real. And I challenge many people. Uh, there's, you know, the campus is healed greatly. I feel like this group's really begun to heal. There's a few other Bible talks really still trying to heal in Orange County. And I've challenged disciples that have not that have been a week Bible talks for a very long time. It's time to write a sin list. But yeah. I want to ask you. Do you need to write a sin list? Mm. Come on, bro. Come I'm on. not on a witch hunt, and I'm not going to go person yeah, by yeah, person. Yeah. Maybe. But I really want to ask you, for your own salvation, mm. I was going to preach Sunday. I'm probably not going to preach it this week or the other week. Um, Matthew 25, the parable of the ten virgins, mm. and it basically says uh, there is ten mm. virgins, The five, and it represents the church. Five were wise, five were foolish. The five who were ready were saved. The five who were not went to hell. Are you ready for Jesus to come back today, or would you go to hell? The question needs to be asked. Do you live a life of openness? Do you live a life of transparency? Or do you have a, like, you know, when your car gets fogged up, you have a fogged view. You can't really see. You know, the light's incredible. I'm grateful the guys got the lights up here. We have some great servants here. Come on. But according to, according to science101.com, Nice. There's four things that light <laughs> provides for us. You guys ready for this? Yes. 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 Warmth, Warmth, growth, energy, and vision. Oh. When you lack light in your life, the light of Jesus in your life from confessing your sin, you're going to be cold spiritually. Yeah. But when you confess your sin, there's I do think the warmth in this group, my first time in this group, I'm not going to lie, I felt like Laura didn't like me, I felt like Ali didn't like me, I felt like Crystal didn't like me, I felt like Johnny didn't like me, you know what I mean? Like, now it's like, I'm just playing, but now it's like, there's so much warmth in this group, there's so much, I'll never forget the first time, uh, I think I reached out to Ina and checking up on her, and she was just super real, super honest, I felt so much closer to her, it was not awesome, sis? When we're real with each other, there's just such a warmth that develops. And the warmth we have in this group from Cora and Ale and even Johnny and, and Crystal and everybody. It's just, there's such a, a warmth that we have. And I really want to encourage you. We need to keep that warmth up. But guys, OC, I've told this to a lot of people this week. 
we took over OC and it was one of the weakest regions in all the LA church. And it's warming up in a great way. But it's up to us, it's on us to keep the warmth going. How? By us staying real. Grow. Have you been growing spiritually? If not, you're stunted possibly because you have unconfessed sin. Unconfessed and unrepented sin. Yeah. I'll tell you, I, I've been under leaders that haven't grown before. You know what motivates me besides the grace of God to keep growing? I've been under leaders that were stunted spiritually and there's nothing more discouraging than that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. True. I want those around me to see a continual growth in my walk with God, in my character, in my marriage, in my life, yeah. in my right. fitness, in all these areas. Yeah. But I want to challenge you to do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Set an example where everyone in the group can look and say, Man, Fitz has grown. Man, Maya has grown. Man, everyone's grown. This is incredible. Yeah. Number three, yeah. energy. Yeah. You feel spiritually sluggish, yeah. mentally slow, yeah. dragging the wagon energy. at you. That's okay. It just means you got to walk in the light a little bit. Yeah. And it doesn't even necessarily mean you have deep, dark sin and masturbation and pornography or drunkenness or marijuana or some crazy sin. It could just be you're not honest about your emotions. You have hidden reservations. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Preach. That seals yeah. your energy as well. Number yeah. four, vision. Do you have a kingdom dream? Yeah. Come on, vision. Everyone needs a vision. Yeah. Yeah. To go on a mission team. Yeah. Everyone needs a vision. To be a great leader. To date and get married if you're not already. Everyone needs a great vision, guys. Yeah. Everyone needs a vision. But if you don't have a vision, the problem may be you're in hidden sin and you're not really transparent. So I want to give you a deep conviction. Being open, it's not a Jason Woody thing, it's not an LA Church thing, it's a Jesus Christ thing. Number three, I want us to have a deep conviction on the mission of Jesus. Mm. What did Jesus do in Mark chapter one after he prayed? In Mark 1 38 says, hey Peter, let's go somewhere else so I can go and preach the gospel. That's why I'm coming. What's the Bible say in Luke chapter uh, 19 verse 10? The son of man came to seek and save. Isn't that amazing? For the Son of Man came to seek and save. Verse what was the last? There you go. This week? Hey, Amen. I'm bringing uh, you guys out there. You're welcome. Uh, I want to give you a deep conviction to be in the mission. That rhymes, huh? A deep conviction to be in the mission. John 15 says, if you're not in the vine bearing fruit, you're going to be cut off. This is not about us making a quota. This is a command of God. If I'm not if I'm not in the vine, so that's why I can't go live apart from disciples and not be a part of the church. If I do that, I'm going to get cut off from Jesus. Mm. That's like, take my hand and cut it off. How long, if I lost my one of my limbs in an accident, how long can my limbs survive without being attached to my body? Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know if you can reattach an arm, but a finger you can. How long can a finger last without being a part of the body? Is it about two hours? How long? But not long. Do you lose two arms? Can you like test it? You cut my finger off for a week? Oh, no, no. no. What would happen? Oh, I'd lose my finger. So if you take a disciple and you cut them off from the vine, they're not connected with Jesus. They're not bearing fruit for two weeks, three weeks, a month. What's going to happen? They're going to die spiritually. Yeah. I got to ask, are you in the vine? What's a sign of that? Is your heart's desire to bear fruit? Not necessarily are you baptizing someone every day, but do you have a desire in your heart? Now, I'm grateful. You know, we had a, a Lena Restored, praise God. She's going yeah. the weather tonight. And then we had Kelman, uh, uh, Kelman, I always mess up his name. I'm saying it right? Yeah. Kelman, baptized on Sunday. That yeah. is awesome. Our group is very fruit. And then in a great way, we're able to bring more disciples in. And this is really becoming a training Bible talk that's going to have more Bible talks come out of this. Yeah. But I want to ask you personally, do you have a heart? I appreciate Maurice. He's telling me, hey, we just baptized Calvin, and he called me on Monday, or I called him, and he said, bro, I'm just already working with these multiple more guys. I just want to get fruitful again. Come on. Come on, Maurice. Come on. I really want to ask you, is that your heart? Yeah. Do you have a hunger? Yeah. A hunger from Jesus to fill these seeds or to, with, with yourself or to fill these seeds with a ton of non-Christians? Let's have a deep conviction to live out the mission. And lastly, we need to have a deep conviction to be committed. Committed to what? The ICC? No. To the CICC and City of Angels? <laughs> to the LOL Bible Talk? G-O-D. I'm going to give you some real, unadult rated, true conviction right here. Come on, Jesus. Okay. Let's go over and ask 11. Come on, Jesus. Go, bro. As I said, no one knows when the day of evil is going to come. 
if I fell away? What if everyone in this group fell away? Would you stay faithful? Would you gather those in this group that actually want to have the Bibles or standard and do this for real? Yeah. We don't know yet. As Eleanor Roosevelt said, you never know what's in a tea bag until you put it in hot water. The day of evil will come. God will shake things up in this movement at some point. And the question for me is what's going to be found inside you? Yeah. Mm. Acts 11. Think about Peter and how she would never. Oh. And then Everyone's going to fall away on camera. Right. I'm never a Lord. Right. Yeah. He was fishing. Acts 11. Thank you, Peter. Someone want to grab the Mosca keys that were there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh awesome. Thank you. Uh, Acts 11. I don't want to be walking over there, you know. <laughs> Acts 11, verse 25. The Bible says, Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Solomon met with the church by great numbers of people. The disciples were called what? Christians. 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 Yes. Antioch. So we know in the discipleship study, we say disciple equals? Christian. Equals? Same. Okay, now let's add one of that. Equals someone who's part of the church. Did you guys know? In the eyes of God, there's a thing called the church universal. Yes. And any true disciple of Jesus is part of the church universal. Right. So what is the one church? People struggle with that concept, the one church. Do you believe you're the only church? No. Well, yes. But the one church, the only church, is not the ICC and not the City of Angels. The one church is true disciples. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a true disciple. You're a true disciple. We are the one church. The organization and the structure of the movement and the local church here in LA, the structure is to serve the truth mm. that we are disciples. Mm. The truth does not serve the structure. Come on. Yeah. So to give you some understanding, that's why the ICOC, they all, they all fell away when the ICOC crashed. Yeah. Because they worship KIPP and they worship the ICOC structure. We can't do that. We need to worship Jesus right. and hold to the scriptures no matter what. What did the Catholic Church do? The original church in the first century, before it was the Catholic Church, the scriptures guided the leaders. What did the Catholic Church do? The leaders guided the scriptures. And then the people served the structure rather than the structure serving the people. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Yeah. And that's why when people see followers, oh, is, is this the kingdom? Is this the truth? Is this? Yeah. What are you talking about? The ICC and the CSD, those are ideas. <laughs> those are structures to help us. What's the truth? I'm a disciple. Yeah. You're a disciple. Come on. Yeah. I could fall. You could fall. Yeah. Right. But my conviction is not based on a human structure. Yeah. yeah. I don't serve the structure. The structure yeah. serves me. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And my goal is to be a true disciple and to gather true disciples that have the Bible as our standard. Right. So that when the day of evil comes, mm, mm. I will not fall. Come on. I will not falter. Come on, Jason. I will not quit. Yeah. Come on. But I'm going to grab the faithful disciples around me yeah. and preach for the rest of my life. And I really want to charge this group. Yeah. Let's go. When the day of evil comes, if all of LA fell away tomorrow, and the hype is gone, the zeal is gone, the 500 baptisms are gone, and we're the only ones left here Let's in this go. backyard tonight. Yeah. The us alone would say, we're gonna win the world for good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna yeah. stick together. Yeah. Amen, yeah. guys, let's have deep conviction. Okay, let's close out by eight at 749. We can keep fellowship for a little bit if, uh, if the grand sales are cool with it. Oh, yeah. But uh, let's just have 10 minutes of feedback here. Who would like to share a few thoughts here? Arthur, uh, I'm sorry, I was looking at Maurice. <laughs> Maurice, I'm going to go Arthur. Yeah, um, bro. I need that big conviction on your name, too. Um, yeah, bro, I think this is an amazing, uh, amazing set of convictions. Um, Tim wrote in his book once, I've always kept it, like convictions are, are like two sumo wrestlers, you know, duking it out. And, and the, the sumo wrestler that pushes the other one out, you know, whatever one that stays, that's the... That's your conviction, you yeah. know, and, and I think I've, I've learned a lot and God will put us in a lot of different wrestling matches to see what really stays mm -hmm. and people can, or close friends can leave um, or get wonky in their convictions. Uh, we can see people that we admire or look up to um, uh, as different than what we imagined. 
and all these things I, I, I 100% believe are meant from God to test us to see who, who's committed to the vine you know yeah. like who just cares about the mission alone and um, and that's one thing I, I wrote um, you talked about just um, you know if you have weak convictions about the mission like you will eventually fall off and I, I was just watching a video last night of this uh, guy who got frostbit and his fingers the, the like the Literally, all his, his fingers on his right hand or left hand, they're all black. So they're all going to, he said they're all going to fall off eventually. But they're still on his fingers. Oh. He just didn't get them amputated yet because he can like kind of still like hold things on them. So, but eventually, it's going to get, oh. uh-oh. Oh, can I get an napkin? Eventually, he said they're going to, uh, it's going to turn into, uh, it's going to get infected. The rest of the body's going to get infected. Yeah. So he has to cut them off. And I was just, Thinking about that, even with my own self and my own. Uh, okay, so then, sorry. I'll talk about that. Uh, but I was just thinking about that, even with my own self. Like, I think there's a lot of hurt feelings that I've had, but something that has helped me personally uh, has been thinking about. Something that has helped me personally has been. Sorry. I had to uh, re double down on my conviction. Come on. Like, I had to make it about Jesus alone and. I, I want to be a part of that. That's what I signed up for when I got baptized. You know, when I got baptized in Lance's backyard five and a half years ago, I didn't even know there was a bigger church. I just, I thought it was a guy at Long Beach. I was like, let's take on the world. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, bro, I, I appreciate what you're sharing, and I think it's it's good for us to, uh, to have that and uh, Come on. with you 100%. Come on, bro. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Arthur? Um, yeah, I really appreciate the question. Uh, super, super important problem to always build our conviction. Um, I remember when I was sitting in studies and, and um, Matthew Rodriguez, he, had, he said the same thing to me. He's like, what if everyone falls away? What are you going to do? Will you still believe the mission? Will you still go after it? And I remember that day, I was just sitting there and I was like, wow. So she's right. I was like, will I? And I, I just asked myself, like, will I? Do I really that this is what God is asking And that alone just put the fear of God in me, and it allowed me to see it all in a bigger picture, that it was bigger than me. And even to the point where you said, we have to build our convictions in order for us to have something for, for our children. Okay? I want I want a safe space. I want a church that my son, my grandson, my future grandchildren can go to. And it... That won't happen unless I have to So it's super important for us that. And then talk about the um, five things of light, right? Growth, form, vision, energy. What was the This point? is porn. That was porn. Okay. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I think that was really awesome. I like that. Um, and it's definitely true. It's like you, you don't get open. Your energy drains you. It, it feel, it feel, there's something off. There's like a wall. Yeah. It's just blocking you from being able to really give your heart to the fellowship, give your heart to God. Um, it, it, it blocks you from your growth. It, it keeps you from being born, and it just keeps the light away from you. But we are the light of the world, and we have to, wherever we go, we have to shine light, no matter where we are. As soon as we leave out of this, this space, we're, we're back in darkness. Like, amongst each other, we're in the light. So like, whether it's in our workplace, uh, don't live amongst brothers in our own homes, in our apartments, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Darkness is surrounding us, so we have to have this connection. So, uh, thank you for reminding me. Thank Come you. on, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just 
thing there, like just kind of loving one another to disciple one another. You know, I'm having those convictions. Yeah. Like, um, because yeah, it's so easy to say, um, yeah, I'm not gonna fall away like what Cora said Peter did, especially if you see those people who baptized you, who uh, raised you up spiritually, you still see that. But we've been to the point where like the people who baptized us, the people who raised us, the people who we went on a mission been there we're like they all laugh like we're like what do we do but like mm -hmm. if we had their conviction we wouldn't be here so nice. um i agree with you like jesus has to be our joy and that's how to stay so i appreciate that and i think that's just a reminder for us because we can easily forget it as the years go by yeah. um but i think i want to just go back to that always having jesus as the joy of my life and being real with one another are from the same timeline basically from 2011 to oh, 2013 wow. five years and is anyone else uh says you're what year were you at <laughs> anyone else uh, around that time no so everyone else is younger most of the people guys that were the devotionals that us we would have went to in la from 2008 to 2013 a lot of those people aren't here anymore Wow. Dang. The, a, a lot of the preachers, a lot of the zealous leaders, a lot of the song leaders. I miss a lot of the song leaders. And you got to realize, a lot of those people, they're not here anymore. Why? Because they didn't put a lesson like this into practice. And I don't want to look around at a group in five years from now and say, man, this, the whole LL Bible talk is not here. I don't want that. And it's easy to be like, hey, hey, no, no, it's not me. But it's a lot harder when you push up and shut. And uh, I think that is big to see you guys. Like, there should be hundreds more standing behind us right now. Yeah. But there's not. Yeah. Um, because when push comes to shove, conviction will be tested, and you have to decide. You're going to come toe to toe with Satan and decide if you're going to have deep conviction. So yeah. Maybe a couple more here. I appreciate you sharing. So just, yeah, please. Don't yeah, I, I really appreciate this lesson because um, I'm able to see, like, from my personal life, like the difference when I wasn't getting open, um, like being in the church four years, but recently getting baptized until. So, uh, three months ago, probably June June 30th of this year, the right way. And awesome. noticing how how much of the what you just shared about getting open and all of that, like the the people who initially baptized me, um, there none of them are here. Mm. And it's and it and it comes down to the things that you shared specifically more like the getting open. Uh, yeah. because there's a lot uh, that we begin to act out like uh, we, we begin to play church and no longer be yeah. the church. And so when I when I when I see that and I compare my life to before and and like me me literally playing church and now uh, being you know a, a true disciple, I see the power behind it. I see the the conviction when when I like, when I get up and I pray. I'm like, well, I'm being like Jesus right now. Like literally Come waking on. up early yeah. in the morning. Yeah. And it, I really do see the, the difference, the strength. Um, this is all everything that Come comes on. put together and i'm just really grateful um I, I can't wait to continue to grow and add to them like the, the scripture in here says you know add to your faith yeah, add to that. yeah. thank awesome. you so much thanks for sharing that's awesome yeah. Yeah. Well, let's go vanessa then one more brother and then we'll close out okay thank you um i remember when i i, I found the church Great relationship, we can be best friends. Yeah. 
if one of us dropped for deep convictions, now it's hard. So there's the question, like, uh, some people even have left Orange County saying, no, 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 our loyalty is still the person the evil when they fall away. No, that's not true. Colton Rome baptized me. I, I was loyal to him because he was loyal to God. But now because he's not loyal to God anymore, I'm no longer loyal to him. I love him. I'm loyal to prayer and to pray for his repentance. But my loyalty only runs as deep as the scriptures to other humans. Does that make sense? Yeah. I call the love the lost. Right. But loyalty is something special. It only comes from the word of God. Amen. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. I appreciate sharing. Let's have one more brother over. Um, no, I appreciate it, bro. I think, you know, for the last 13 years and nine months, it's kept me going. Um, yeah. It's tough. Uh, but it's a great reminder, too. Uh, it's funny that Vanessa was saying that because even when you go on a mission field, right? Like, when, when I came back to Paris in 2021, it wasn't the same. It's a big church now. But when I shared stories with us, hey, we're meeting up in the living room with moldy stairs, and wow. uh, the house was halfway shaking, and I'm like, hey, uh, you want to study the Bible? You want to be a disciple? And the person was like, what in the world? What am I doing here? There's only seven people here, and this is the church. This is it. Wow. And you get baptized into the kingdom. Um, but those people who stayed faithful, uh, they got to see where, where it's at now, yeah. you know. Uh, I think we can feel spoiled at times, but not to remiss that Satan's still prowling, uh, and he will take people in and out. But it's not to, obviously not grow disheartened and everything, but I think what Jason is right, like having the energy spiritually, but fighting for this family. Uh, I think for me, this is one day that I love waking up just like, hey, like, praying to God, but okay, this is the LOL, this is Orange County, and we got to fight for this region, fight for this area. It's not all the way evangelized yet. There's still millions of people in Orange County that was able to reach out to uh, and go after. So yeah. we're, we're scratching the surface. I think for me, that's just what it is. Like, I'll put in my heart, it's like, hey, man, you know, it's growing, but that doesn't mean it's enough. Like, at the same time, God is still using us, still using me despite our flaws. So I can't wait to see the future of what happens here. So. Yeah. Come on, bro. Thank you for sharing. Next week, let's do a potluck. Let's do a potluck style Bible talk. Uh, let's find a place to host it. Uh, we'll get that out tomorrow. Let's do potluck. Who can bring something good? Does anyone have any like specialties that are cheap to make that they can do awesome? Any Filipino? Adobo? Oh my god. Is that chicken? Chili? Okay. Danielle and I make some mad meatballs in the in the uh, in the crock pot, the frozen meatballs in the crock pot with some barbecue sauce. <laughs> Welcome. Mexican taco. Oh, oh come on. So let's do. Does everyone like that? Let's do. Yes. Let's do a visitor time. Let's have another family time type thing next week. We'll look at a few passages. But I want to get you excited to bring visitors out. So tell them we're gonna have a little, a little uh, time in the scriptures and potluck. There's gonna be a lot of food and a, a few scriptures and some great time of fellowship. Yeah. Omar, why don't you get a little playlist with some music going? I got and you. Let's just have like 30, 40 minutes of just fun and we'll look at a couple passages and eat some food. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Uh, does it, you guys feel good about that? Yeah. Yeah. I think this has got to be family vibe is great, but I do want to make sure we're focused evangelistically. Right. So I want to challenge us. Let's all go find a couple Bible studies tomorrow and let's all bring a visitor. If we do, man, I'm just saying, if we're going to be in a chorus house, we're going to pack that place out. Like, uh, <laughs> we're not going to invite it back. Uh, so it's going to be great. Amen, guys? Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Let's see here. Jesse, why don't you pray for us? Let's go, bro. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's hold hands, guys. Dear Heavenly Father, um, thank you for um, sharing about our convictions through Jason today. Um, I want us all to build and strengthen uh, each other's Conviction and if we're holding back any sin, to let that open and uh, uh, open our hearts and get right with you, Lord. Um, in your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, when they got baptized in 2019, I guess like half the people are not there anymore. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It's okay. Wait, what'd you guys do? Did you get here um, one time? Uh, 630, um, 635, 636. What did you guys do? Oh, we ate this music. Oh, just playing music and that's it? Yeah. Any other TV? No, no, no.